Relax and take notes. What? Today's video sponsor is GGG Mall. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I should get plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna be speaking a little less louder than usual. Uh, that's because people are still sleeping, I'm recording um, really, really early in the morning. So yeah, that's normal, I believe it's... it's... <laughs> It's Sunday, so once again, it's quite normal. Um, as for today's video, we have once again the Smart Access Memory on versus off option. But in this time, instead of having it on all GPUs, we're focusing on the new AMD generation, the new RX 7900 XDX card, okay? Smart Access Memory on versus Smart Access Memory off. But what is actually Smart Access Memory and what does it do? Well, for starters, Smart Access Memory is actually AMD's implementation of a technology called Resizable Bar. And it is not only there, just their implementation by name, it is also a very, very improved implementation over the, um, the casual and default Resizable Bar. And once again, what does Smart Access Memory do? Well, usually um, the data is interchanged in between the CPU, the RAM and the GPU. What happens is that without smart access memory, imagine that the, G that the CPU has to make a call for 1 GB VRAM. Without smart access memory or resizable bar, what happens is that you are limited to a max of 256 MB per call. So imagine that the game needs 1 GB of VRAM, uh, 1 GB to be loaded, okay? It needs one gigabyte, so the CPU has to make four calls for the GPU in order to load one gigabyte. So if you were in need of, let's say, two gigabytes VRAM, if the game was in need of two gigabytes VRAM, the CPU would have to make eight calls of 256 megabytes for the, for the GPU in order to have those same two gigabytes of VRAM. While when using resizable bar or smart access memory, you can actually make one call, you can actually make the full GPU VRAM with one call. So instead of having to, to make, for example, eight calls for two gigabytes, you could do just one call of two gigabytes. And if the, the game needs four gigabytes, you just need to make one call of four gigabytes. And even if the GPU has 16 gigabytes and some game somehow needs 16 gigabytes immediately, then the CPU can make one call of 16 gigabytes instead of having to make dozens of calls for that same amount. And since in most cases we are enormously reducing the amount of calls that the CPU has to do for the GPU, even more in games that need a lot of VRAM or if you're playing at higher resolutions in some scenarios or at higher FPS numbers where the refresh of the VRAM needs to, to work uh, way faster, well, it happens that since we are reducing enormously the number of calls, we are making our system way more efficient, okay? And if the system is more efficient, it should, in theory, perform better, okay? And yeah, basically that's it. So without any further delays, let's go to the results. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is today's first game. This is a game known to favor AMD GPUs, so logically, smart access memory had to make at least a little bit of difference. But in this case, it makes a huge one. In this case, 25% at 1080p, 20% at 1440p, and 13% at 4K, being especially important for people playing at high refresh rates. Moving to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we also have a big performance difference. It seems that smart access memory is actually more important in high FPS driven scenarios, as the difference seems to get smaller as the number of FPS do. At 1080p we get a massive boost of almost 50 average FPS, which in this case is around 21%. At 1440p the difference is quite smaller, being only 26 average FPS, that represents a 14% increase in performance. And at 4K it's only about 10 average FPS, which represents an 8% performance uplift. Rainbow Six Extraction is much heavier to run than its predecessor Rainbow Six Siege. Yet, this GPU is so powerful that it is running it at over 400 average FPS at 1080p, which is just 
insane, with Smart Access Memory delivering only a 6% performance uplift in terms of averages and 8.5% in terms of 1% lows. As soon as the resolution goes up, the difference gets smaller and smaller, till we reach the 4K with over 150 average FPS and almost no performance uplift. Still, great results for this GPU. Plague Tale Requiem is one of the best games I've played so far, being truly a work of art. In terms of results, it seems Smart Access Memory does absolutely nothing for this game, at least not something that would be noticed in a real gameplay, with just a slight increase in the 1% lows. It would be nice if AMD and the Sobo Studios worked on this, as with the amount of very detailed textures this game has, I do believe it could benefit a lot from Smart Access Memory. Just saying. Moving to Cyberpunk 2077, the performance uplift, although less significant, is still there, with a 10% performance increase at 1080p, 8% at 1440p and 4.6% at 4K. It's also interesting to note that we do have higher 1% lows increase from SAM at 1440p than at 1080p, which might or might not be a coincidence or just margin of error, but from my experience that does not seem to be the case. Maybe since we're more GPU driven at 1440p, the 1% 1 lows were more affected. Who knows? Red Dead Redemption 2 is also an interesting case. In this game, all, and I repeat, all AMD GPUs have bad minimums, but as soon as we activate Smart Access Memory, the minimums increase is just insane, and with further driver optimizations, it should get even better for these cards, the RX 7900 series. At 1080p we have a 14% increase in average FPS, but a 129% increase in the minimums, meaning that we have 2.29 times the results we had without smart access memory, which once again is insane. At 1440p and 4K the performance gains get smaller, but still quite noticeable in real gameplay situations since the closer the minimums are to the average FPS, the smoother the gameplay will be. Moving to Microsoft Flight Simulator, we also have some odd results. This time we not only have performance gains, but we also have performance decreases. At 1080p and 1440p the results are really close to each other and that's because we have a CPU bottleneck at 1080p. And although we have more average FPS at 1440p and 4K with Smart Access Memory enabled, we also have lower 1% lows. And my initial thought was that it was maybe due to a CPU limitation at lower resolutions, but since we still had a little 1% lows decrease at 4K, my theory was debunked by myself. So overall it seems that in this game Smart Access Memory is not worth it, at least with the RX 7900 XTX. But if you are using an RX 6000 series, well, you'll benefit from it in terms of averages and 1% lows. Just letting you know. And well, I've tested Forza Horizon 5 in lots of GPUs and I can tell you right away that the stupidly high performance increase you see here happens to almost all AMD GPUs in this game. But I also have to tell you that this GPU is kind of still bugged on Forza Horizon 5, at least with the 22.12.2 drivers. Although the performance seems ok, it is much lower than it should be, as even an RX 6950 XT for example performs close to the same, which once again should never happen. In terms of performance analysis, well we have a 50% average FPS increase at 1080p, 46% at 1440p and 31% at 4K, alongside a massive increase in the 1% lows. Astonishing performance gains here, but well, once again expected to get even better as the drivers for the RX 7900 series major. Now we have Guardians of the Galaxy. We saw that Smart Access Memory tends to work better in high FPS scenarios, but it also seems that it doesn't work that well in CPU bottlenecked ones, at least not all of them. At 1080p we get a big CPU bottleneck in this game, and that's why the results are messed up and we actually end up having less FPS with Smart Access Memory activated. At 1440p things get way more GPU sided and Smart Access Memory starts making its magic, delivering a mild increase in terms of average FPS, but a 10% increase in the 1% lows. At 4K, well, the situation is close to the same, but now since we are 100% not CPU bottlenecked, the averages increase was also higher, being now 12% versus the 4% at 1440p. 
quite interesting. Now we start with the new games that I tested specifically for this video. The first one is the Callisto Protocol. I played this game to the end and gameplay was not super smooth, but it was actually pretty acceptable in most cases, but the benchmark tool was much worse, with some parts stuttering to the points that you see here, where for one second you would go from 180 FPS to 47, which makes absolutely no sense. Oh wait, this game is made on Unreal Engine 4, so it actually makes sense. In terms of results, we get a small performance uplift at all resolutions in between 5 and 9%, which is not great, but also not bad. Free performance. Dying Light 2 is another new addition with its recently added inbuilt benchmark. I must say that I wasn't expecting much of a performance uplift on this game since it is an Nvidia sponsored title, but I was wrong. We got an 11% increase in the average FPS at 1080p, 8% increase at 1440p and a 5% increase at 4K, which is around the performance that some overclock settings would bring in most games, but without the overclocking part. Overall, great results. And well, earlier I told you how smart access memory actually worked better in high FPS scenarios, but worked worse in CPU bottleneck ones. Well, it seems that does not apply to Horizon Zero Dawn. Even with Horizon 7 7700X, we got a massive CPU bottleneck at 1080p, and in some particular parts, even at 1440p. And yet, we had a massive performance increase by enabling smart access memory. And this time, not only in the averages, but also 1% lows. At 1440p, 24.4%, and at 4K, 16%. The bigger gains were presented at 1440p, where we only had a mild CPU bottleneck, and I believe the difference would be even bigger at 1080p if the CPU was even better. But I mean, we're already at over 230 FPS, so I guess it wouldn't matter much. Doom Eternal now it is, testing once again the Vulkan API. Doom is one of the first scenarios and a few scenarios where smart access memory does not increase the average FPS, but instead increases the 1% lows, leading then to a smoother gameplay experience. When I first tested I thought it was due to the margin of error or something like that, but since the three resolutions got 1% lows higher with SAM activated, well, we have our answer. Overall, once again, great results here. Testing PUBG using the X12 and Ultra settings with the replay feature led us to the same exact results as Doom Eternal, with the averages being virtually the same, meaning they are all inside the margin of error, with the only performance uplift appearing in the 1% lows, with a 12% increase at 1080p and 10% at 1440p. Being 4K the only resolution to not benefit at all from smart access memory, once again maybe due to the lower FPS numbers compared to the lower resolutions. Getting closer to the final line, we have Fortnite using Unreal Engine 5.1 Nanite, Epic Settings, Lumen set to high and using Temporal Super Resolution at Epic Settings and High Quality. It, temporal Super Resolution is kind of an upscaler, not kind, it, it is an upscaler and it's basically using the Epic Settings with High Quality, which is equal to using the LSS or FSR 2.1 in Quality Mode. And like PUBG, Fortnite does deliver us better performance when using smart access memory, being it in terms of averages or 1% lows, with a 13% average FPS increase at 1080p, 12% at 1440p and 10% at 1440p ultra wide. Fortnite may look like those games that came with the serial boxes in, in the 90s, but I mean, it is as heavy as it is beautiful when using Unreal Engine's Nanite and Lumen. And that's why even the RX 7900 XTX at 1440p ultra wide and using temporal super resolution can only achieve 117 average FPS. Still, nice to see some free performance here. The last game tested today is God of War and the X11 title. Now we have some of the most confusing results I've seen so far. In almost all AMD GPUs I tested so far, none of them had a performance decrease when activating SAM. Some of them saw no performance uplift, and that's expected, but at least they didn't see any performance drops, which is something that happens with the RX 7900 XTX, at least in this game, and makes absolutely no sense. 
I can only attribute this to the lack of driver's optimization. After all, it's just the second driver's version for these cards, and the RX 6000 series had similar issues in the beginning with some games as well. So I guess I need to retest the 7900 XTX in some months. Overall, we have a minor decrease in the average FPS numbers, but a huge decrease in terms of the 1% lows. Huge to the point of the user being able to notice the overall smoothness while gaming. I mean, the less overall smoothness, which is quite disappointing. We still have good results, of course, but not as good as they should be. Let's move to the conclusion. And well, guys, as you saw the results, well, they are massive. In some games we have from, let's say, from 5 to 15%. Usually the performance uplift is around 15%, uh, 15 to 20% at 1080p, uh, sometimes way more than that, up to 50% in games like Forza Horizon 5. But usually at 1080p we have a performance gain of 20 25%. Going for 1440p with this GPU, we have a performance gain from 10 to 50 per, to 15 percent sorry usually around that and going to 4k we usually have around 10 percent performance increase because in some games we have 15 in some games we have 10 and in some games we have five or zero so it is from let's say six to ten percent performance increase at 4k but generally the bigger gains are at 1080p and 1440p if you're going to play at high refresh rates then uh those 20 or 30 fps actually matter because you also have 20 or 30 hertz more so it does matter as long as you're inside your monitor's hertz uh, so inside your free sync or g-sync range so it does matter for the high fps gaming players okay that's just my opinion. And while this is just for the RX 7900 XTX, it also happens for the other AMD cards, as you can see in all my other comparisons, because I do feature the Smart Access memory results uh, in all my GPU comparisons. So you can see there that the, um, that Smart Access memory does increase the performance. It does increase the performance a lot in some scenarios with the RX 6800. It does increase the performance a lot for the 6950 XT as well. It increases it for the 6700 XT and so on. So the lower the performance is, the lower the Smart Access memory affects the, the overall performance at all. So if we go, for example, for the 6600 XT, in terms of percentage, the performance gains are lower. If we go to the 6500 XT, they're even lower, depending in the game, uh, depending on the game. So it matters. Um, that's because of the high FPS numbers, like I, I said in the, the previous video. I assume that at higher FPS numbers, well, um, the smart access memory makes more difference and that's why with higher performance GPUs we also see higher performance increase from smart access memory. But those are just my two cents. And well, thanks a lot for watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it as always. And also if you have any doubts as usual, leave your doubts in the comment section and once again as usual, I'll answer as fast as I can. Have a nice weekend, yes, have a nice weekend, a nice Sunday, and see you in the next video.